said, let's do a quick hey, Sean, right here, right now. Hey, Sean, it's just like it sounds. I field questions from the tribe, and they usually start the question with the words, hey, Sean. This is a tough one. This is a this is a heavy subject. And I'm talking about it because I just I just got a message last night and one from several weeks months ago. Talking about dealing with a bad code and dealing with death in the ICU or any any nursing unit. At the end of the day is how do you deal with the horrible negative outcomes that we have have to deal with as nurses more specifically when patients die I, I have a million random thoughts to to share with you and I'm gonna try and make them as organized as I can so very quickly I have been in the critical care world for almost 15 years worked as a bedside nurse in the ICU straight out of nursing school if you can think of an ICU, I've probably worked in it in some fashion over the past 12 plus years before I became an NP. Medical ICU, CV ICU, trauma ICU, surgical ICU, I've worked in oncology, I've done travel nursing. Big, huge teaching hospital that uh, has a residency program that's 15 floors and seven wings large, all the way down to the baby hospital that had six beds in an ICU. Yeah, I've been around the block a few times, and I've seen my share of death. Dare I say I'm used to it? Yeah, it's just, that's a little strong. 15 years later, death still affects me, but it doesn't knock me down the way it used to. And I'm still experiencing patient deaths as a nurse practitioner in the ICU, if not more now than ever. In my part of the world, nurse practitioners have the ability to fill out and sign death certificates, so I do a lot of death pronouncements. I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes it's just routine to do it, to see it, to experience it, and other times it takes effort to recover. Each one makes it a little bit easier. Each time you experience a patient death, it gets a little bit more acceptable. Some people say that your, your, your heart hardens over time or that you lose the ability to care. I have a hard time believing that. And if it does, and you truly are not affected by a patient death in some small way, yeah, it might be time to look for a new job. I mean, the cornerstone to our profession, being a nurse, is the compassionate care that we provide. And if you lack the compassion, especially during times of death, yeah, it's time to move on. It really is, because you're doing your patients and yourself a great disservice. In fact, it's quite damaging. First thing I'll th say about uh, patient deaths is no two deaths are the same, no two patients are the same, so you're never going to react the same. So, so don't hold yourself to some crazy made-up standard that you have to treat every patient's death as if they had a high blood sugar. Anyone that tells you otherwise is fucking lying to you and you need to get as far away from them as possible. I, I mean, I joke a lot of times to say that as you become, as you grow as a nurse, you lose the give a shit gene, but dealing with death is a whole different ballgame. Yeah, you're gonna lose your patience. You're not gonna get riled up the way you, 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 you did when you first started this job, but you damn well better give a shit about how when people die. Second point I'll make about a patient death is you need to talk about it. You need to talk about it 
with anyone and everyone that will listen that you feel comfortable with. And I'm talking anyone that can relate, every from your coworker up to your manager, up to your director, or a fellow nurse that you knew way back when, previous nursing classmates, you can talk to non-nurses about this, your family, your friends. You obviously need to stay within the guidelines of HIPAA. Yes, HIPAA. But you need to decompress. You need to get it off your chest. This is one of the first ways to relieve yourself of the burden of feeling, the burden of guilt. Because we all are going to feel it. We are in the business of saving lives. And when we don't do that job, we feel like we failed in some way. Whether it's a preventable death or someone who is finally at the last leg of their journey in life. We often feel like we didn't do a good enough job and it's hard to let go of that feeling. You will soon learn that you have one of the greatest jobs in the world is that you get to let people die on their own terms. When you get a chance, Google the words dying with dignity. It's a real thing, and it's an honor for us to be able to do that for our patients. You need to make sh you need to do your best, your absolute best, at remembering that this is the first time that this family, this fa patient, these friends are experiencing this. I don't care if this is your third death in one day. You need to treat every single one as if it's their first time, because it is. Your actions, your non-actions, will have a permanent effect on everyone involved. Next thing I'll say about dealing with patient death is, it's absolutely okay to cry. In fact, if that's going to make you feel better, let it rip. Don't do it in front of patients and families. Don't do it in the middle of the unit if you can prevent it. But it's absolutely okay to cry. And some of us who don't cry, maybe you need to scream, maybe you need to yell. Just let it out. 15 years later, I still cry. Damn right I cry. After you've gone through all of those things for every single patient that dies, the next thing you need to do is take care of yourself. As soon as you can, go do something, go experience something that enhances your joy. I don't care what that is. It can be something as simple as eating a piece of chocolate. I don't care. Do something that makes you feel good. Do something that makes you smile. Do something that fills your heart. Doesn't matter. And I would highly encourage you to try and do something for someone else. Because that always makes me feel better. I take care of myself by taking care of others. Not to mention having that occasional piece of chocolate. Seriously. You need to let off steam, you need to have some, have some fun in some way, shape, or form. Maybe you like to exercise, go for a run, go do your favorite workout, doesn't matter. Maybe you just want to hang out with loved ones, family, and friends. Maybe you want to go hug your children, go spend time with your nieces and nephews, or go hang out with your pets, go play chase with the dog. Do something you enjoy, and make sure you do it as soon as possible. Find the balance. You just had something happen that just sucked the life out of you. Now go find something to inject more life into you. The last thing I would do would be uh, what we call the debrief. And the debrief can happen at any time. Doesn't matter, it can, be ha can happen right at the bedside, can happen after your shift, during your shift, can happen the next shift, it doesn't matter. The debrief is just that. You need to go over the events and make sure that you feel okay with what happened. If you, you need to ask questions, answer questions that have been asked, Go over the minor details and the major details of the events that happened in your mind with someone else who could have, would have, should have been there. This is also a great way to decompress. It's also a great way to understand the process 
and it's also a great way to rationalize your feelings. And, and let's keep in mind that worst case scenario out of desperation, you can always chat with people online. Online nurses are still nurses and they know exactly what you're going through. And I guess I should rephrase that because some of your online uh, nurse friends are pretty close so you might even go to them first. The last thing I'll say about dealing with patient death, dealing with the bad code, the worst thing you can do is ignore it. The worst thing you can do, the most damaging thing that you can do is to treat it like it never happened or to treat it as if it was like another chore, another task. You didn't just pass your morning meds, you didn't just check a finger stick blood sugar, you just helped, you just experienced another human being dying. If you don't deal with it in some way, it will damage you, it will break you over time. And it may not happen immediately, but it will happen over time. Over a period of time, it will chip away at you, and it will turn you into something that you are not. This job is not easy. Not in any way. This is one of the reasons why not everybody can do this job. The emotional strength that you have to have, develop, and maintain is unparalleled. Lean on your peers, lean on your mentors, and always seek help. Seek out someone who will listen. Seek out someone who gets you. Curious what the tribe has to say. How have you dealt with the bad code? How have you dealt with patient deaths? Leave your comment down below. Remember I showed you that I was gonna start burning down a old stump in my yard? Let me show you the progress. It's burning down quite nicely. <laughs>